you, Lil. You already answered my question. <laughs> and this speaks to the um, question in itself because this is just so perfect indeed. Um, I just can't even tell you how lovely and perfect this all is. Okay, um, wow. <sighs> and this speaks to it there, all right. Because you talked about travel, you talked about control, and you talked about allowing it to unfold. And so um, um, my question is about the horse sanctuary, and I'm developing this horse sanctuary. It's a horse and wildlife sanctuary. And I am allowing the process to unfold beautifully. And the way I'm doing this is I'm having this conversation with the actual horses to figure out what they want and how to have that be. And the horses have, you know, told me that, that they already go there. And it's not just the vortex version of it, that they literally already go to this horse sanctuary that in the future okay and so the, as i describe it because i and i said so i didn't need to do it it's already happening and they're like no because you described it as i describe it they already go there and and but yet they can't tell me how to get from here to there because for them to say anything would interfere with the unfolding of it and I could, ex I could talk about a little bit more of how I built this re relationship with the horses real quick. Um, that I, I don't like the, the trainers, there's, there's horse owners and there's horse trainers and then there's me. And I, I have this vibrational and this love relationship and this respect relationship with the horses. And the horse trainers, are so much more gentle than the olden days. They're so, so much better and met so much respect and proper respect I give to the horse trainers because they are doing their best, but they're fear-based and control-based in their relationship with the horses. And I don't know enough to know what I don't know. And so I just came at it so fresh and new. And I thought that they were picking up some of my good habits and one special horse trainer was and the rest of them though decided to shun me and they started treating me with fear and control and i allowed that because i'm just treating them with love and respect still and the horses respond to me and i'm just allowing all this to not interfere with my path i'm not letting any of this stop me in my love of the horses and the, the, the knowledge that none of this is interfering with anything. And just a quick example, the horse trainer had this horse and it was rearing up and it was out of control and it was doing all this jumping and it was, it was reacting strongly. And I said, would you like me to take the lead? And I took the rope and as soon as the rope touched my hands, the horse relaxed and he just walked away real relaxed. And he, just, it was like a switch, a light switch for me. So the horses react different to me. As I didn't do or say anything. It was just the presence of me with the horse. And this horse would not be caught in the field. It was running away from everybody. And so I took the time and I just went into the field and I would sit with this horse on a big log. I sat on this log. And I just sat there and the horse would walk up to me and I would take selfies with the horse and just hang out. And the cat would come and sit on the log. And I just spent the time with this horse. And then pretty soon the horse would let me walk right up to him and I could lead him into the barn. And then later I would just open the gate and the horse would walk right up to me and I could lead him to the barn. And I just built this relationship of respect. And then later, that's how I got to the place where I am now. And so, I just wanted to talk about um, with you this experience of horses and cats and their ability to time travel or any of this stuff that I just talked about and where you would like to comment on it. Everything you talked about points 
back into discovery. Discovery of horses finding their own places where they feel good and there are places where they're going to receive the answers, you call that sanctuary, and then the places with their trainers or others that are interacting where they're going to get their questions too. In other words, all of that is so valuable to them as well it's valuable to you. So that place when the horse even told you that he wants or she wants to have that place of ease and satisfaction of you to guide them and then sometimes them to take over. In other words, this whole lead and follow, this whole question answer dance, this whole focus and focus dance is happening with everything and everyone that is giving attention at any of the time. So what you want to see before we get into the second part, underlying part of what you really want to hear about here and it has to do with horses but it has to do with people as well we want to bring to your attention that that which you are bringing for them you're not bringing for them out of necessity that they have to have it in other words they do not need anyone to provide them the final desire in other words to give them the desire they want to be on a discovery and therefore that communication back to you that yes we see it yes we also want to have more of that satisfaction yes we are already in the place of receiving the value of being that even from that exchange of an idea that you had with them but we also want to see what's on a discovery we want to open up this gift box and this gift box and this gift box and this gift box we don't want to immediately just go there and feel like we're just in sanctuary and now we are safe and now we are free and now we can do whatever we want in other words they also do not want to like you do not want to come to the place only of that answer place in other words where you get so much so unfocused that you're not really interacting much more because there's so much satisfaction in blended integrated place that you are and that every focusing mechanism is that you're having that beautiful dance where you don't even see what is that unfocused and focused part that you're so comfortably dancing in between that you're just switching perspectives as you said switching perspectives where they are leading while you're riding them and where you are leading while they are riding on your wave in other words that's happening you might not be physically be ridden by the horse but when you lead that is what's happening in other words the mutuality in that experience is there based off of what you are seeing and the underlying part of you saying that they may other trainers come from the place of fear and from uncomfortability and from feeling that they need to control something they do not understand as much but that you keep this loving steady and the fear comes back to you and you keep this loving steady and the fear comes back to you in other words you want to see what's happening over there are you recognizing this fear so much so in other words you do not recognize the fear in a horse you see it they recognize the fear fear because they cannot control the horse but then you also recognize their fear and the moment you recognize that fear we want to let you know that you're not so loving and kind and appreciative and blissful about them when you recognize the fear you activate some sort of a fear for you now you may get out of it very quickly and turn back into that place of loving and satisfaction and bliss and appreciation but in the moment of interaction or recognizing that you are at that moment very focused you have activated the place of question otherwise you would not see it when you're so steady in your place of experience you do not really see as much of that as a fear you see that experience of others as they're looking for the best way for them to interact with the horse they're learning they're in discovery about understanding that there is not much fear necessary that actually fear is just a construct about something worrying about something that might happen that most of the time does not happen and when you see that from that perspective then you will see this trainer and this trainer and this trainer in a different light we recently offered the words that when you are so steady and loving and appreciative and full of that steadiness and bliss and that divine dominant place of your physical focus then you can really see shining through them that place of ease and satisfaction even though sometimes you gotta look for it in other words when something is dominant 
and you recognize and then you switch it very quickly but sometimes you can be so steady that you do not really see fear as a fear in them that you see the fear as an opportunity then that you see that which you call fear as a discovery path for them because they all are like you like the beautiful horses or the cats at all time looking for a more steady ride in other words not slower but more steadiness between the rides becoming more exciting and more exciting and more exciting everyone in their physical experience is experiencing that well i whenever i call it fear that they're doing and yes that is right they're looking for a steady ride but i think that they could have a more pleasant ride just to speak to them briefly because like you said fear is um expecting something that'll probably never happen and i'm complimenting them or giving them the benefit of the doubt when i say fear because like i'll be out there giving plates of hay and i'll be like oh hello what a beautiful day we're having here's some hay here's some for you here's some for you here's some for you and then she'll come out and do something like get back get back yeah get 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 back and i think oh she's being aggressive and unpleasant and i'll compliment her the best i can and say she's afraid of these horses you know and it's just so jarring and unpleasant and i can't believe that she's been at this so much longer than me and yet it's so clearly unpleasant for her and i want better for her but yet i'm just and we know, want better for you we want better <laughs> for you when this person acts like this in front of the horse for you not to go and jump into all of that in other words you're trying to force it with a compliment you're trying to force it with anything else than that but what you want to is not get distracted from your study in other words you're having this interaction and if this interaction is so dominant there is nothing nothing that can affect you at that time so you want to check in with your study with your beautiful experience of what you're having and then when something like this come through you allow yourself to open the door for the questions to come through this happens when you feel steady and you do not open the door for the next question this happens when you are so steady and the question finds you and this is what we've been talking for quite some time there is really this steadiness or these tools that you have found you and so many in the place of from question to move into more and more and more and more ease and once you get to that place of steady that is the time before you witness something like this to include all of these people that is the time to say, you see, I'm experiencing this beautiful interaction with you. I'm talking to you. You're talking to a horse now. I'm talking to you and I'm experiencing all of this. And I know that everyone can find more resonance because it's so easy to tune in. But I have also done a certain amount of work. I have done certain consistent work to get me to be in the place of dominant ease and I know that while some might have not found it in a way that I did they are consistently looking for it as long as I consistently look for more and more tools to keep me there and I know from this place of steady from this place of really enjoying this interaction I know that I can see in anyone who offers any kind of wobble that which is what I'm seeing now in the place of steady. So as I go and withdraw my attention from my moment of bliss in interacting with you right now, I will go with this place of steady and anything that comes my way will not throw me off where I will see them as someone who is fearful and I will see them as someone who is in trouble or someone who could do it better because they've been there for quite some time. In other words, I will not measure up so much. I will keep so steady for so much longer because I have I am the one inviting that experience after the only time you will ever feel thrown off is if you feel that that place of ease and satisfaction and love and bliss and steadiness is for you to catch it and nothing ever to give you any, any, anything else but we want to bring to your attention that this part of creation from that place of feeling easy steady that feeling of answer that's dominant with you that bliss always invites another question and it's just a matter if you want to be the one opening the door or if you want another person working with your training to start yelling from the place of fear to help you generate that question that is really where your choices are and it just seemed like at some point they would appreciate me and and start emulating me and 
instead of more or less going, get back, get back, and acting like that toward me and controlling me and limiting my exposure to the horses and things. That is happening when you are steady. Now you're bringing a completely different example. You were saying, I can be enjoying my time with the horses and see them being in fear, or I can enjoy my time with horses and them being softer in their experience of that which you call fear. Those are completely two different, different experiences for you. One of them is that the question found you. The other one is that you invited a question. Can you say that again? And I'm yes, we will say it as many times as okay. it takes for you to hear it now or later on things will sink in. In other words, you from your place of steady, when you're so really blissfully steady, you have the choice to stay there on your own and be in a way interrupted or being directed for something in your focus. In other words, some question or some kind of what's often called contrast or some kind of variety experience, it's inevitable to happen because you will always have this dance between the question and the answer, between some kind of resistance and not so much resistance. There is always going to be that movement. So once you're in that place of steady, knowing that it's inevitable for you to experience some other moment of expansion, some moment of curiosity building, some moment of question birthing, some moment of even some kind of slight discomfort sometimes, you can invite that on your own. You can be on a lookout, what is the next pebble in your shoe? And when you are on a lookout for, there, for that, you have opened the door for the next question and then nothing can surprise you. Then worry or fear or some kind of not satisfaction cannot throw you off because you are the one inviting that next question. You made a decision from the place of steady and ease to open the doors for the next question because you're not in fear that you will never go back to the ease or that something will throw you off so much so that you're not gonna come back to ease because you practice this part of creation process so well. You know that anything that gives your attention and any preference that you're making while observing variety will at all time, through the tools that you have, bring you back to this place of bliss. So then you really feel in power. Then you really feel like you are the one looking for trouble. You are the one looking to see who has fear about horses. You are the one looking to see how you can see them differently because every time you open the door and see them from that place of steady, from that place of steady, nothing really looks like a problem. Fear looks like curiosity. Question looks like discovery. And any kind of discomfort looks to you as an opportunity. So that's when I'm looking for the question, right? That is correct. When you're looking for the question. And now what is it like when, I, when the question finds me? When the question finds you is that you're in a place of bliss and you're holding on to the place of bliss that something takes you out of it. In other words, you can have that automatic response because most of those experiences can go automatically. You will go into the next question inevitably. Are you going to open the door for the question or is the question going to knock at your door or maybe knock you off because that question is coming in a form of someone kind of being out of the sort. So is that less preferable to do it that way? There is no less or more preferable. They're all and will always be part of your experience, but we say that you can really affect that other part of the creation process. This one that you master to get into the place of ease, regardless of how you do it, but then going into the question with the same amount of ease, we want to bring to your attention that that is possible. That is possible to be predominantly your experience. That means that you are so steady, that you're present in the moment, that you so are, regardless of what the action is. And then any action that you give your attention to, anything that you give your attention to, becomes satisfying activity process. I love it because, yeah, it's like you're, I'm, not, um, I'm not overly invested in this beautiful, this beautiful now moment, which is so scrumptious and lovely. I'm not overly invested in clinging to it. Oh, it became unpleasant. That's okay, because I'm sure there's going to be another beautiful, pleasant moment over there. This loud woman came or whatever. I'm going to leave now or something. And so, 
Yeah. Or, so that is true. That is the moment when the question finds you and knocks the door at, knocks at your door. Or you can be in a place of, I'm so steady right now. There is nothing for me to hold on. It's time for me to give attention to something. And since I am the one choosing to open the door and give attention to something, anything that comes to my attention right now is welcome because I'm the one that welcomed it. I'm the one that opened the door to see what's out there. I'm the one I can say even looking for a little bit of trouble, looking to see what will be the next pebble in my shoe to generate the next question that will generate beautiful discovery of so many more answers. Hmm. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you. That's a whole new way of looking at that. And uh, I, so I don't have to avoid it or be afraid of it. And uh, the contrast will always lead to something better and improvement. Thank you. The only time you will ever feel to hold on to that ease, and the moment you actually start holding on, you're not in ease anymore. But the only reason why you'd, you would ever even intend to do it is if from your experiences, you might have more unsteady moments than moments before. And now you have found that steady, and now you want to make sure that unsteady never comes through. But what about having this beautiful balance between sometimes unsteady and sometimes steady? Because once you get to that place of steadiness, such powerful place of being then it does not matter to you even what kind of emotion is being generated because you then start living beyond the emotion Ooh. we know yeah. we offer this as a book title to costa in one of the meditations he had the other day and something beautiful will unfold in the months and years to come on this topic I encourage him to write it because I'm not afraid of my emotions, even my negative emotions at all. And so, yeah, go cause that. Excellent, excellent start to this broadcast. Go ahead, we're ready for more.